Welcome everybody, it's me again, the microbiome expert. I just launched my platform three months ago and now things are really picking up. So we're going to start this presentation with a recent testimonial, this one from Turkey. By the way, I was in Istanbul a few years ago with my sons and it was amazing. I recommend you go one day if you can. So I'm going to quote this word for word. Greetings to everyone from Turkey. I am Atakan. I am writing this article for Guy Daniels, who is the chief expert of a channel that I discovered early and will grow a lot in the future. I bought a protocol from him for the price of a meal, and after a very short email, I received incredible relief and relief from problems such as candida, which I've been dealing with for many years. I experienced improvements in just two weeks. I had used very intense antifungals and had very restrictive diets, and the situation was getting worse even before. Guy Daniels, who looks at the issue holistically, explains the importance of feeding our beneficial friends in the intestine with very good supplements in the protocol. I strongly recommend that you buy and try your protocol according to your disease. I'll also post this on my website with the others. About half of my customers are outside the United States, and welcome, willkommen, bienvenidos. I just redid my protocols to reflect any troubles there may be finding the prebiotics I recommend, which are very readily available in the United States and Canada. And when you have success, I'll be happy to post your video or written testimonials. So let's get started. So what is this prebiotic called rabinoxylans? Well, it's basically two sets of sugars with bonds, arabinose and xylose. The xylose is the structural backbone, xylan, as you can see here. Xylan is a major structural polysaccharide in plant cells. It is the second most abundant polysaccharide in nature. Once again, it is fuel for good bacteria, hidden behind bonds we can't access. And the best source for us would be bran. That's rice, wheat, rye, corn, and barley. When the bacteria cleave the bonds, they have arabinoxylanooligosaccharides, axos, and xylooligosaccharides, XOS. To make white bread, millers just want the endosperm. So to make things simple, we'll call all the remains of the bran. Now there's a lot more to the bran than arabinoxylans. There are other prebiotics, like beta-glucan, lots of B vitamins, minerals, which may or may not be locked away, and powerful phytochemicals. The arabinoxylan content varies from source to source, as does structure. But is this source of fiber, more so than others, that is most strongly associated with reduced risk for cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and gastrointestinal cancer? If we look at my complete meta-analysis of all the human and humanized in vitro studies for arabinoxylans, we get this chart. The tax that you see here are the ones most responsive to arabinoxylans. The key here are the increases in erectile, roseburia, and ruminococcus. They are universal health promoters. Prevotella comes in handy at times, as you'll see soon. And the thing most noticeable is the huge increase in bifidobacterium. Now, generally speaking, bifidobacterium species are health promoting, but there are exceptions. Also, people are too obsessed with probiotics, like bifidobacterium, because that's all they've been told. Lactobacillus is the other main probiotic genus and has horrific data in those with dysbiosis. See that presentation. I just got a message yesterday with someone trying to convince me of the benefits of bifidobacterium probiotics. First, you very really need probiotics, and when you do, they aren't the situations and types you're thinking of. Second, as you can see here, bifidobacterium loves rabinoxylans. It also loves inulin. It likes very much partially hydrolyzed guar gum, there is also data for beta-glucan, pectin, and a case of resistant starch, bifidobacterium adolescentus. Why not just feed it? If it responds to so many prebiotics, just give it the fuels it loves. The money you spend on the tiny amount of viable bifidobacterium species in your probiotic is not worth it. The numbers of bifidobacterium that will reach your colon pale in comparison to the potential of feeding the ones that are already there. Stop with the probiotic nonsense. If F. prozitzii, a species you may have never heard before, was marketed to you in the same way as the current probiotics, you'd be running out the door to buy it, and for good reason. Here are all the data points I have for bifidobacterium across all the diseases slash conditions I've analyzed over the years. As you can see, the data is mostly green, which is good. That means when a significant difference was found in a human fecal microbiome study, more often than not, it was higher in healthy controls. So we can say that bifidobacterium is generally health promoting, but its data is nothing as compared to a number of true health promoters. 
If we look at this chart in the first column, for instance, the data is pretty split in IBD. Note that it's more favorable for Crohn's than less so for ulcerative colitis. See those presentations. In IBS, it's almost all green, and the data is best for IBS diarrhea. In Parkinson's, the data is all orange, but that's because it metabolizes Parkinson's drugs, not because it's a bad actor. See that presentation. In contrast, here are the data points for f prausicii virtually all green. See that presentation. This is the true superstar of the microbiome, but it does not exist as a probiotic. Why? Because it's extremely oxygen sensitive. It dies within two minutes of air exposure. So companies can't profit off of the true superheroes. Instead, you get fed marketing. The other highly beneficial bacteria are also butyrate producing oxygen sensitive bugs like Rosburia, Ruminococcus, Erectale, Carpococcus, and more. Their data points are far superior to Bifidobacterium and not even in the same universe as Lactobacillus. And I keep getting comments on soil-based organisms. Somebody deserves a marketing award. After thousands of research papers analyzing healthy versus unhealthy microbiomes, nowhere have I ever seen soil-based organisms determining anyone's health. They just don't come up on the radar. It's time you learn the facts. I mentioned Prevotella earlier. It's a genus with a number of species, which respond very nicely to Arabinose Island. But like Bifidobacterium, we see a general trend towards green, but the data is mixed and condition-specific. For example, the data tells us that Prevotella is not a good idea for IBS diarrhea, but it is for constipation. We also see that it's beneficial for IBD, COVID, C. diff, cardiovascular disease, and healthy aging. Very oddly, we see mixed data for metabolic syndrome. Odd because Prevotella is a big propionate producer, and that short-chain fatty acid has a lot of good metabolic syndrome data. For example, in this wheat bran arabinose island oligosaccharide study, we see something common. Oftentimes, the research community wants to split up the microbiome into Prevotella and Bacteroides enterotypes. What this means is that some people don't have any Prevotella, and some have a lot. Bacteroides is another large genus, and when Prevotella is not dominant, Bacteroides usually is. We see in A, with the color blue, that when subjects started with a fair abundance of Prevotella, it grew in numbers significantly with the adding of Arabinose islands. That makes sense, since species within Prevotella possess the enzymes to utilize the sugar in Arabinose island hidden behind bonds. While in B, we see no Prevotella at all. Why do I mention this? Because your response to food or supplemental prebiotics depends on your starting microbiome. This example is relevant for any taxon I could mention. Keeping on the topic of Prevotella, we see in this in vitro study differences in short chain fatty acid production. Now, Prevotella is not a butyrate producer, like the superheroes, but it does make propionate, which isn't too shabby, especially for metabolic syndrome you can see the three prebiotics analyzed in figure one. FOS has a very simple structure and gets fermented quickly, too quickly. For more on that, see my presentation on inulin. And you can see how corn arabinose island has a more complex structure than sorghum arabinose island. And the two columns represent the Prevotella dominant or Bacteroides dominant microbiomes. In short, the results tell us that one, the sorghum arabinose island fermented much faster than the corn arabinose island. We want longer fermentation. And two, the Prevotella dominated microbiota produced two to three times more propionate than the Bacteroides dominated microbiota. Again, all considerations in putting together a blend of prebiotics. In this study, we see rice arabinose island with more arabinose than corn as a percentage of composition. Table 1 tells us that rice arabinose island is a more complex structure. And remember, the more complex, the longer it takes to ferment. We want fermentation in the colon. Figure A tells us that rice arabinose island significantly increased known superheroes in the microbiome, while corn arabinose island did not. You may be thinking, wait a second, the biggest column at the beginning had bifidobacterium as the biggest beneficiary of arabinose islands. Well, yes and no. First, I lumped in studies with various substrates. For example, whole bran versus arabinose island versus axos. This is why I recommend the whole bran. Here in figure one is the complete arabinose island structure. The first feeder in line is Roseburia, that amazing genus from earlier. It possesses three enzymes able to break bonds 
when almost no one else can. Back to Rose has one enzyme. So Roseberry is the first at the table, and this is great because it's a butyrate-producing superhero. This is why we want to use the brand. Which leads us to the concept of cross-feeding. Roseberry and Bacteroides clip those first bonds, and then Roseberry can keep feeding, and this is also when Bifidobacterium begins to feed. So Roseberry and Bacteroides enable Bifidobacterium to eat. Otherwise, it couldn't access the sugars. This is why I do not recommend XOS. When some salesperson tells me that FOS, GOS, or XOS increase bifidobacterium, I don't care. One, they are snipped up too small and will ferment in the small intestine and not the colon. This is especially bad for SIBO. And two, I want to feed Roseburia and others like it. Bifidobacterium likes many prebiotics. It will get its share. And three, lactobacillus and bifidobacterium produce a lot of lactate. I want butyrate. Too much lactate is bad. See my presentation entitled Lactobacillus Probiotics, a Dumb Idea and Those Who Are Dysbiotic. Since we've been talking so much about Roseburia, let's take a look at its data. This is the same format as we saw before. Look at how consistent and amazing this data is. For almost every data point, for every disease slash condition I've analyzed, the healthy controls have significantly more species from Roseburia in their collective microbiomes as compared to the unhealthy cohorts. This is who I want to feed, and the others like it. This is why people need to get off the probiotic bandwagon and get onto the intelligent use of prebiotics bandwagon. Let's look at a few of these studies giving us these data points. Here, we see inulin compared to arabinose island. Very typical results show that inulin increased species from Ornaus types and bifidobacterium, while arabinose island increased species from Roseburia and Bacteroides. This is one of the reasons I blend prebiotics. We want to target multiple bacteria for a given disease microbial fingerprint. If we just administer one prebiotic, it won't do the job. And also, as a part of that improvement in the metabolic syndrome profile, we see a significant decrease in LDL with arabinose islands, while inulin flatlined. This study used heat-stabilized rice bran like the one I recommend. You can read the text as to why they heat it we see significant increases in classic health motors like species from ruminococcus and anarostypes, as well as from bifidobacterium, cross-feeding. And in this wheat brain study, lactic acid bacteria did not increase. However, there were increases in one key taxon in particular, the very important erectile. And there were significant decreases in two classic opportunistic pathogens, Veianella parvola and Enterococcus fecalis. Let's do a summary of brand structure and introduce a couple last items. Thus far, we've learned that rice bran seems to be the more complex arabinose island when looking at its composition. But here we see corn, wheat, and barley bran have more overall arabinose island as a percentage of the whole bran itself. So, you'll get more arabinose island by weight with, say, corn, but the arabinose island you do get from rice is more complex and more likely to feed, say, roseburia. Beyond this, not shown here, barley contains a high amount of beta-glucan, while rice does not, if maybe a little bit. In the end, what's important is that if my protocol asks for rice bran slash arabinose island, and you can't find it, then find a brand you can work with. It will be okay. Compliance is the key. The last two points I want to make are tied to this table one. At the far right, you can see this thing called ferulic acid. It's a great phytochemical within bran. And it's a reason for many of the non-prebiotic benefits of bran. But bran does have its detractors. Since I have been seeing a lot of videos about people endorsing very high animal food diets and the avoidance of many plant foods, I should mention the topic of phytate in bran. These people say that it's an anti-nutrient and should be avoided. So let me highlight a few things. One, some of the highest phytate foods are health-promoting, like bran, almonds, and walnuts. Two, I realize nobody is going to ferment and soak their foods, but cooking, which we all do, like for, say, lentils, significantly reduces phytate content. Three, if you have a well-balanced diet, phytates aren't a problem. The form of minerals from animal products is not subject to phytates. Four, the theoretical anti-nutrient impact is only when you eat high phytate foods with other foods, 
So if you use rice bran in a shake away from other foods, it's not an issue. Five, the diets that have high phytate content are ones like the Mediterranean diet, for which the epidemiological data is excellent, whereas there is no good long-term health and longevity data for a very high animal food diet. Five, bran is loaded with B vitamins, which you will absorb. Six, you may actually absorb the calcium, iron, and zinc locked within the phytates because some of your microbiome may possess the enzymes necessary to liberate them. Seven, Brian also has plenty of highly beneficial phytochemicals. Eight, phytate has a number of health benefits you can see listed here. And nine, as seen in this presentation, some of the most beneficial bacteria within our microbiome are able to ferment various parts of Brian, thereby boosting their numbers and your health. The key to a healthy microbiome is to feed the good guys the fuels they love. If Roseburia is happy with Brand, then I am too. I recommend Arabinoxylans from Brand very often. It's an excellent prebiotic for a number of microbial profiles. Of course, in combination with other prebiotics and administered together at an appropriate dose. As for Brand supplements in the market, there are quite a few. As you saw, the different source of Arabinoxylans have slightly different profiles, and therefore potentially slightly different results. But we're aiming for maximum benefit, which includes your personal considerations. So for example, if you can't find rice bran, and if you have issues with, say, gluten, that rules out wheat, barley, and rye bran. That really just leaves you with corn bran. In either case, you want a fine powder, something that is more palatable and finer in size for the microbiome to access the surface area. If you think Arabinoxylans may be a good choice for you, take a look at my protocols and skip the trial and error and select your condition, and you can purchase a protocol specific to the needs of your microbial fingerprint. If you found this presentation informative, I have many more for free in my YouTube channel and also in the Microbiome University tab on my website, themicrobiomexpert.com. There you can select from a wide variety of topics, and if you or a loved one are struggling with a disease slash condition, I have condition-specific presentations as well, along with their microbiome protocols found within its respective tab on my website.